today we're going to be talking about estimation. We're going to learn how to um, round certain numbers so we can get a rough idea or a ballpark figure of something we're trying to look at. So for example, we would uh, use a common, a common method of rounding, which is uh, significant figures. So just to remind you that if you are rounding to a certain number of significant figures, we always start on the left, and it's the first uh, digit, non-zero digit we come to, in this case the one. We now ask ourselves, is the one affected by the number after it? And you may recall that if the number next to it is a five or above, then this does indeed affect this number. In fact, it increases it. And so that one, that number, the one are changed to two, and so it will become 200. Just by looking at this number, you can use your common sense and say, well, yes, we can see that it's nearer to 200 than it is to 100. So we say we've rounded it to one significant figure, or one SF. So let's have a look at this sum and see how we would use that method to give us a rough idea of the answer. It may be that we don't have access to a calculator. It may be that we've been asked specifically to make a very quick estimate. And in engineering and virtually every other walk of life, th there are situations where it would be necessary to estimate. And so, how do we do this? Well, in this case, we look at the 119. Now, it would be tempting to look at that and automatically assume that it should be rounded to 120. And of course, that would be wrong. Using the method described here, our first significant figure is the 1, and it's unaffected by the number after it. The number after it is not 5 or more, it's le less than 5, and so it does not affect the 1. And so we end up with a 100. And it's multiplied by 5.4. And although this is a decimal, the same rules apply. And so our first significant figure is 5. And we simply ask, is it affected by the number after it? In this case, no, it remains as 5. If you like, I could put 5.0. And then the 46, the 4 is affected by the 6, so it becomes 50. And this can then be multiplied out, and so we end up with 500 on the top and 50 on the bottom, which of course is 10. Uh, we could also, at this stage, we could um, cancel things down a little bit here. So we could say, maybe get rid of a zero on the top and the bottom. We could say, well, five goes into this once, five goes into this once, and we'd end up with 10 times one, which is 10, divided by the one, which again is 10. Some people might prefer that method. Let's, um, let's have another little go at a different question. Five sixty multiplied by five point four five, and that's all divided by zero point five three four. So very quickly, then the five sixty rounds to six hundred. The five point four five. Now that just rounds to five, and if you want, I'll put the zero zero in just to show you that we've rounded there. And finally, we divide all that by 0 0.5. These numbers, this number not affecting that one, stays as 0 0.5. Uh, and again, we could quickly uh, work that out using either of the method, methods we looked at before and get our answer. Let's look now at a functional skills question. And so, uh, we're very keen these days to introduce students to uh, mathematical problems which are set in real life situations. And so functional skills questions they are. 
And so let's quickly do an example of estimation, but in a real world context. So let's start with a factory. So, we have our factory and we're told that there's an area of wall inside which needs to be painted. We're also told uh, that the paint that we need to buy comes in one litre tins. And the manufacturers tell us that each tin is capable of covering roughly an area of 15 and a half square meters. So we're being asked to uh, give an estimate of how much paint we need to order. Now, you may be aware that in a lot of real life situations, we, uh, we can't use estimations. We have to, for example, when building a bridge, ensure that it will stand up to very specific loads and so we use estimation though still in certain situations in almost every arena and so in this case we we've been asked to uh, quickly work out how many tins of paint to buy and in the case of paint just like with home decoration it is often better to buy too much than too little. Why? Because if I went back to uh, the shop, like a B and Q or something, and and said, "Oh, I've run out of wallpaper. Can I have some more?" They may not have the wallpaper in, or if they do, it may be a different batch with a slightly different colour on it, and so that wouldn't be uh, very good. And so it is better in that situation too to buy a little bit more. Uh, than you need and so it is in this case so let's see what happens when we apply our rules of rounding to these figures and so 645 you will see becomes 600 square meters and by the same rules 15 and a half meters for the coverage uh, would go to 20 square meters now, although we've uh, consistently applied the rules of estimation to both these numbers, and these numbers are correct, still we have a slight problem. This is a, a skill we just need to develop. We need to look at this and have a little bit of a think. We've now rounded this, and by doing that, we've underestimated the wall area which needs covering. We've estimated 600 instead of 645. And so we could end up ordering far too little paint. And then over here, 15.5, it's, it's just over 15, which takes it all the way up to 20. Now, you remember, that's the coverage. We might say, wow, this paint tin covers a whole 20 square meters. We don't really need to order that much. And so if we're not ordering as much as we need here, and then we're ordering even less here because of this rounding, then we'll end up with far too little. What we do in this case is, is, is employ a little bit of common sense in order to break the rules that you've previously been told. And so with this one, I'd say it would be better to not round that to 20 at all, but to round that to 10 square meters. Now, it is, it is only through maybe common sense or maybe experience that you'd be able to you know, make that call and round it in effect the wrong way. But by doing this, what we're doing is this, look, the wall area here has been underestimated and that will lead to getting too little paint, as I said before. And here we've underestimated how much coverage each tin will give. We're in effect saying here, wow, this, this actually only, if it's only going to cover about 10 square meters, we need to order quite a few more, don't we? And so when you combine these, what you find is that one rounding, if you like the wrong one, that this rounding, it compensates for this one.
And so one balances out the other and we get a better idea. We end up in fact with 600 square meters divided by the 10 meters coverage gives us the number of tins, which is 60. Now, let's say instead we were asked to do two coats of paint, two coats of paint. You may be tempted to take this figure and say, well, we'll just double the 600, but, but listen, you need to remember that when we round, we're introducing an error. So, of course, 600 is not 645. It's, it's a fair way out. And so for the purposes of estimation, it's useful. But we need to remember that we've introduced this error. And if we double this, then we could we could we could um, make that error even worse. And so we would be better starting with the first figure. Now, um, I mean, as it happens in this case, if we used either figure, we would end up with um, the same answer in this case. But it's better practice to start with this one. And so we would be better, I'd suggest, doing 245 times two coats gives us 1290 square meters and then this rounds down to 1000 square meters now that's how much wall area we've estimated for two coats we end up using this and this area needed coverage by the paint again gives us the number of tins and that'll give us 100 tins and I, and I know from actually calculating this that this is still a, a fair bit more than we need but as I say that factory won't stay clean for long there'll be scruffy little patches everywhere which will need uh, touching up and also they've got they've got plenty over if they need to do maybe another another small area so that's there's estimation for you in a real life context and if you want to know more obviously you can go on the internet plenty of resources um, apart from this one and I'd encourage you to do lots of examples and also in your everyday life, try to get into the habit of uh, making estimates uh, of, of anything, of, of, of things around you, just to, just to get into that, that good uh, habit and develop that skill. So thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll see you next time.